Welcome, everyone. Good. Thanks. Yay. Thank you. 50, right, Kiza? Hey, here we go. 50 is good. So welcome, everyone. This is my Empowered Spirit Show, Energy Focus, where we come in. We talk a little bit about what's going on in those cosmic forces, how it affects us. We align our energy and we look at the cards. So this week on the Empowered Spirit Show, the podcast really had a great conversation. And I've interviewed Ram Lev a couple of times. I think it was my favorite. All right. He had this book on called Your Conscience, The Key to Unlock Limitless Wisdom and Creativity and Solve All of Life's Challenges. It really was a great conversation about where we are now and why we get so distracted and how we're out into the world so much instead of pulling our energy in and how we can build that practice one minute at a time. He's with the American Meditation Institute in New York. He's been around for a very long time. He has so much wisdom. One of the things he brought up was junk food and junk thoughts, which is worse. Listen to the podcast for that answer. Really great, because it is. He was talking about it's National Conscious Month, January, so we caught it right at the end. Check it out. A really good interview. I think it was my favorite of all that I've done with him. Shout out to my sponsor, Forecast Salon, here in Homewood, Alabama, a beauty salon dedicated to making a change in the beauty industry through creativity, education, and styling. They're really amazing. Shout out to Brittany and all of her crew. Mark, everybody over there, thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. All right, so here we are, the very last of January. January was really about, I think it was about restructuring, right? It's like, oh my God, you had all that retrograde. We still kind of got a little bit of it, but it really was like, what happened to us? Where are we going? What is going on? For me, really vulnerable admitting it, but I was in a dark night of the soul. I really was, and I finally realized like, okay, that's what it is, and I do think there was some mirroring of the universe. I think some mirroring of everything that's going on right now, this dark night, where are we going? But the beautiful thing that comes out of a dark night, revelation, evolution, change, what's different? What am I observing? And I think a lot of us are feeling that in January. And now as we open up to February, especially with this like second new moon coming up, wow, that's unusual to start out the year. We're going to find more of like really more intuition guiding us and more innovation and things coming forward. You've got all that Aquarius energy coming on. So we're going to see some big shifts. I am starting to feel that, starting to have some things coming forward to, for me as well. And just like, okay, I recognize things aren't any, uh, the same anymore, right? We all do that. And it's not about going back. It's going to be about going forward. And it's going to be about shining your light. And it's going to be about trying new things. All right, because there's so much open space coming up. It's what it feels like for me. I cleared out a lot. I moved out a lot physically, spiritually, mentally, all of that. And now I'm rebuilding. And, you know, sometimes I will say, and I admit again, vulnerable, sometimes I have these little panic attacks. Like I had one today. It's like I was going for a walk and and I'm still working on my lungs, right? A little long-term effect from the COVID I had and asthma. And it's like, oh, can I do it? Am I feeling okay? And I'm taking all these supplements and I had to calm myself down a little bit, and you may be feeling that too. You may be feeling a little panic of going back out or going back to the yoga studio or doing something different or outside, and that's okay. You know, it didn't feel good, and it's like, am I making this up? But I had to honor what I was feeling, did a little tapping. I still went out. I still walked. Beautiful day, and I moved through it, caused a little bit of some, you know, uh, energy. I, I'm not happy about it, but... I have to honor what I'm feeling and you may feel the same way. And so one of the things that I will be doing, I'm very excited and starting Tuesday is teaching yoga classes and teaching what I use to help me get strong in what I'm doing. So you may notice a little vulnerability as you start to make changes and start to move forward and start to do things differently. Yes, that's what we need. That's what we need. So I'm going to bring on. Sophia Adler, she's really great. She's an astrology consultant. She is was on the show when we started the year in January for the first new moon. And I wanted to bring her back for this second one and talk about like, what has January been? What can we expect? Why two new moons, right? What does that mean for all of us? So let me find her and bring her on. Sophia, here you are. I see you. If you want to join, I'm waving at you. There we go. Join. She'll be on in a second. But we're going to talk a little bit about what some of that energy is all about and how we can really work with it for our highest good. All right. Give her a second. It's going to come up. Yay. Hey, Sonia, how are you? Good. How are you? It worked. I'm it worked. did work. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I was having a little trouble on Facebook. My sound wasn't there, but it is better. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So welcome back to the show. Thank you. I'm so honored and excited to be here. Truly, like, so excited. Yeah, I am so excited too. We had such a great conversation. And I think it's just really great that we actually planned this, that you came back at the end of the month and we look at the energy sandwich in and even talk about like, what is a second new moon? What is that all about? And what can that show us? So yeah. Yes. So we usually have one new moon and one full moon a month. So we have 12 of each each year. And sometimes we have an extra new moon or full moon. Most of you are probably familiar with a blue moon, which is when we have an extra full moon in a calendar month. And this month we have an extra new moon, which is called a black moon, which is a little ominous, but doesn't need to be. And so we will have this black new moon late tomorrow. I think it's, Mountain Time and West will have it late tomorrow on the 31st, which is what makes it a black moon. And then everyone else more east will have it um, on the 1st of February. And it, quite simply, it's just when we have a second new moon in a calendar month. As a reminder, a new moon is when the sky is dark, when the sun and moon are next to each other in the sky from our prefer from our um, vantage point on earth and so the sun kind of blacks out the moon right and so the night sky is dark and new moons are typically associated with new beginnings kind of new creations you can think about the cycles of the moon alongside the cycles of life right of birth so i'll use the example of a plant a new moon is when we plant seeds right and what do we need to do in order to make a plant or a vegetable or a flower grow we need to put the seed down into the earth. It needs to be covered. It needs to be dark. And then eventually the flower will start to grow, right? The seed will start to germinate and to sprout and will kind of come to fruition, come to maturation. And that's the full moon. So this new moon is a new beginning. It's definitely auspicious. And you don't need to be afraid when you hear, you know, oh my God, we have a black moon tomorrow. What does this mean? What I've really been leaning into and it's been coming in intuitively is this idea of the fertile void that, right, thinking about planting the seed in the darkness, in the depths, you can't create without first going down into the darkness. If you think about the Big Bang Theory, right, everything was created from nothing in a flash. If you think about a baby being born, a baby is in utero, it's in darkness, it's in water, and then it's born. And before that, right, there is no baby. So there's this there's this magic and this potency and this, this purity, I think, to this new moon and also reminds us that we can begin again as many times as we need to and as many yeah. times as we desire. Thank God, right? The moon is over. Yes, it just goes along with some of that dark night of the soul that many people, I know I'm not the yeah. only one. So yeah. it's like that darkness. And like you said, like out of that, that creation that comes forward. Mm -hmm. It does feel really good. And it does feel really in alignment with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, like the man-made calendar of 2022 starting, it's really been out of whack with the cosmos. So, you know, this and idea. Medicine of, wheel. Yes, for sure. Always. Like I've been thinking a lot about today about like the cosmos really didn't care that we transitioned from 2021 to 2022, but now they're ready with this second new moon. We had the new moon in Capricorn, which was much more, um, rigid and conservative and kind of turning inwards, getting down to work, looking within, what does living life and integrity look like? Aquarius is a young sign. It's also ruled by Saturn. So we still have that diligence, that commitment, that um, reticence that kind of keeps us in line, that helps us identify our goals and then actually start taking action to achieve them, right? But there's, there's something about this new moon alongside the fact that Mars is no longer, or Mars now rather is in Capricorn, Venus is stationed direct, Mercury goes direct this week, that the cosmos are finally like, okay, we're ready. You ready to begin? Are you ready for the newness that you've been asking for? Are you ready for that momentum? Now is the time. Let's go. Yeah. I so agree. And to me, it's like, thank goodness. It's like, thank goodness, because we do need to rebuild in so many ways. We really do. And I know for a lot of people, I've had a few people comment, like, I'm not the only one feeling that darkness and feeling all those deep questions. What am I doing? What is my purpose? You know, what am I wanting to do this year? And it's taken me a little bit of time. And, you know, like I said, like teachings of the medicine wheel, 
we really don't even start the year until spring. Like this is our deepest time to pull our energy in and to really go into what those dreams and visions are. So it is a little bit more in alignment with that. And then the other thing we have on Tuesday is the start of the Chinese New Year, which yeah. shows again, because they do follow the lunar calendar. So it shows again, like, oh my goodness, like here comes another energy of newness and another like whole totally energy. You know, going from that ox energy into the water tiger, it's like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think that you bring up such a beautiful point of that, you know, newness isn't always shiny and bright and, for lack of a better word, new, right, and exciting. This new moon, this black moon is reminding us that new beginnings can start from darkness. They can start from the depths. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. I really think that this new moon is an invitation for us to remember that our darkness within us has nothing to do with good or bad. Good parts of us, bad parts of us, if we're good or we're bad. I think of this darkness within us, this new beginning, as the parts of self that our soul planted at the moment of reincarnation and have yet right have yet to been or have yet to be unearthed and to rise above the soil and now is the opportunity and the time with the cosmos help right I always talk about co-creating with the stars to move forward to create to yes. do to do it differently I think that our darkness the parts of ourselves that haven't yet come to fruition or maturation right I think those are the parts that set us apart from everybody else because it's very easy for us to shine in ways that make other people feel comfortable and safe. Because of course, it's like to normalize it, as you were saying at the beginning of just honoring the way you feel, to honor the fact that we are human beings. Human beings like to belong, to feel safe, right? So the parts of us that make it easy to do that are already here. But the sure. parts of us that you know are associated with our freak flag, that are more unique, that, um, allow us to really defy the status quo and be rebellious, those are the parts that this new moon wants us to bring forward. Those are the parts 2022 is asking for. You know, I was saying to you earlier, it is the start of the Chinese New Year. It is the year of the tiger. I am by no means an expert in that at all, but just reading about it generally, you know, the tiger being about courage and about change and about pouncing, right? There's there's just so much synergy. And I think that the path for us moving forward in this year is really quite clear. And the second new moon is like, okay, we're giving you another chance, another oomph. Like you can always grow and change and create and do something different. Yeah, definitely. And I just think that's so important for all of us to see. It's like, okay, I know so many people with vision board, vision board. Okay, get the vision board back out and reignite that energy for you. Maybe it changed already. Maybe it didn't. But bring that back to life and really recognize that, you know, one of the things that I like to think about is even if you can't quite see how you're going to get to that vision, mm. right? My favorite vision board this year, the one I did with my daughter, I did several of them. I love them all, but just finished one with my daughter and I looked at it the other day and I was in a meditation and the whole thing came forward. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I have a vision now. And it's like, all right, then let me just co-create, like you say, with the cosmos and let it just kind of follow the lead of what's going through and what's coming forward and not be afraid to have some of those bigger visions, even if I can't quite see how I'm going to get there. But I think if you don't have a vision and you don't have any of dreams coming forward right now, that can make you feel even more lost. At least it did for me. Like, I don't know what my vision is. I don't know what my purpose is. I kind of had an idea. I know I like to help people. I know I like to help people wake up and create their practice and stuff, but I still felt a little lost. And I think many people are kind of feeling like that. So using this energy of the newness to start again, using, using the energy of the tiger, and you can read more about it. I talked about it on the podcast too. And because that tiger, it's not just like pouncing and going fast. There is yeah. that courage. That is that element of compassion that tigers do hold. You can go and look at the animal spirit of a tiger and it's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it will allow us to go through. Also, it has the water energy. Water's our heart. It's our emotions, our flowing of energy, which is really beautiful too to help us move through this year. You know, be guided. I say like, if you go down a river and you try to hold on to the side, you're going to be bruised. But if you allow yourself to float, with the water, and I think that's some of what's going on now, allowing yourself to flow through, still do the work, right? Still put your intentions out there, still do it, but allow yourself to be guided a little bit easier, I think is a really great way to look at it and trust for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, so um, our new moon, our black moon is in Aquarius. Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, and Saturn is a planet that brings about clarity because it helps come to truths. 
I will say they're not always easy or comfortable truths, but this new moon also really has the potential to allow us to see things more clearly so that we can decide what we want our relationship to it to be. So to your point, for all those people who are like, I still don't really see, I don't know what's coming, I don't have the vision, that's okay. Just being open to some sort of clarity that will come in. And it could be clarity about what's not serving you or what's not working. We have to see that. I don't want to say first, but that it's also a part of it, right? And again, it's not about good or bad. It's just about being like, huh, okay, is this serving me? How do I want to change my relationship to this? You know, as you said, the moon is a very watery planet. It's about emotions, comfort, nourishment. But what people often don't think about with the moon is that the moon also signifies change. Mm -hmm. The moon consistently changing, going from new to full, full to new, back and forth, back and forth. And when we lean into the moon, when we allow her to guide us, it gives us also the permission to have different phases and cycles. It gives us permission to be in a dark night of the soul or be in a place where we don't know what we're creating. But to your point, to hold the vision, to keep taking steps forward. I like to think of it as... um, devotion rather than dedication or determination the devotion to self a devotion to the practice of just showing up every single day yeah you know being open to what comes through too i totally agree and i will say that part of my own healing lately and getting myself back into a place where I can find those visions and really move through that dark night of the soul. And I, again, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but when I can really focus on that each and every day and hear the guidance that comes in and the synchronicities, you know, I ran into two people today. I've been wanting to talk to It's like, wow. Okay. Right. It's like allowing for that intuitive part to be guided. I think that's really important. And the moon will help us to do that. The moon reminds us of our intuition. It reminds us to look at the difference between intuition and illusion reminds us of all that. And also the phases, like you said, I've been ruled by the moon. I am cancer. And so I always feel that. Energy. And I do have a big emotional body, but it allows me to know that, okay, it's going to keep changing. Just try to work with it a little easier. And in my later days of trying not to hold on to all those emotions so intensely, like, okay, just cut it, cut it, let it go, let it go. Right. And know that that cycle is going to continue. But I think too, now, as we move through this energy this week, the mm-hmm. retrograde, like you said, is going to move out. Venus has moved out. We've got that Mars energy too. And so we will start to feel a little bit more of that direct energy. Don't go crazy. (laughs) Right? Don't go crazy. Allow yourself to move through one step at a time as well. But I think that's really important for all of us to see and keep doing your vision. Keep doing your devotion, as you say. I love that word. And I think that will help you one little step at a time. We talked about on the podcast, one minute at a time. Don't get yourself so overwhelmed. Like, I can't do it. I can't meditate. I can't sit for 35 minutes. You don't have to. Right. It's just a little bit each day. And that's going to help you really start to understand more and more. And as silly as the vision boards may seem, I know people go, I don't know. They don't work, whatever. I find that just like finding those images and looking at that. And then all of a sudden you look down, you go like, wow, there is something to be said here. And I think they can be very helpful, but you still need to vision it. And you still need to have that, so to speak, as the movie in your own mind so that you can come back to that energy as you move through. But you know what? I think this year, and you probably can agree, Sylvia, is that it's going to be a lot of changes. So the more we can be flexible and the more we can, like, okay, let me try this. Let me be curious. I've been hearing that a lot. Like, let me be curious to see how this will be. Instead of like having a fixed idea on what you want, let me be curious Mm -hmm. how this will be. And I think that's a good way to look at it, especially as we go and start the new year. I think that's really, or start, restart. (laughs) Everyone, (laughs) because we started, January was intense. And I know we talked about this, like it seemed like, oh my God, the end of the month, but January was a hard month. (laughs) It was a hard month, yeah. And you know, and that too, like, okay, it's a new moon, January is ending, we can leave January in the past. Something that I try, right? I'm human too, I'm not always perfect, nobody is, but something I try and always come back to is the idea of this or something better. So for you, right, like for me, of having a vision, not knowing how I'm gonna get there, it allows for fun, it allows for play, and it allows for spirit to join in. Because if we know exactly how we're gonna do something, then it's really easy to control it. And I will say, you know, to this point of curiosity and trying different things, I love the idea of a vision board. I actually talked about this with a client on Friday in our session, you know, 
Aquarius is an air sign. It's very mental. Aquarius is incredibly analytical. Now will be, you know, Aquarius season generally, this new moon in Aquarius, it'll be easier for us to kind of find a sense of safety in using our analytical mind. And it's also easy to overdo it. So can you lean into more watery practices like a vision board, you know, like some sort of creative outlet that just allows for balance that by doing that, you might have that spark of creative, that spark of creativity, but also that spark of like analysis, that click, that clarity that will help you. It, it yeah. doesn't have to be yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think that's a good way to look at it is have those aha moments, allow yourself to open up to newness. And I, I think, you know, kind of like what I was saying in the beginning too, like sometimes you can have a little panic attack, like, oh my God, can I really do this? And then you can get in the mind, it can talk you out. And then of course, like in the mind, I can't do this, I can't do this. But take a breath, you know, it's kind of like I was saying today, just take a breath, do a little tapping if you need to, whatever settles you down and just try it. Like, let me just try it one little step at a time. You know, it's, I think when I went back to the yoga studio a couple weeks ago, I was like, can I make it through the class? You know, it's like, all right, well, there's always child's pose. I can always go. And it's like, that's for life too. You can always take a pause, take a rest, but trying new things, I think is really, really valuable right now, especially as we open up to this new energy. And especially if your life hasn't been where you want it to be, especially if you have some new ideas or new ways to go, or you want to change your work or you want to try something new with your work. Now is the time to do it. We were talking about this last night at dinner. I had some friends over. It's like, oh, my gosh. Like, if ever there was a time to make change, right now. Right yep. now. Make it. Yeah. I mean, the world is changing before our eyes. It has been. It's continuing to. We can either resist it and try and go back to, quote, unquote, normal, which wasn't very normal before. Uh, or we can lean into it, right, and ride the wave. I always think of the analogy of a surfer. Like, for me, I'm not really a big storm person. I'm not running to the beach when there's lots of rain and cold temperatures and harsh wind. But for surfers, that's the time. Yeah. They're running out to the beach, right, because for them, it's a thrill. It's all about perspective. It's all about what we see. And we have the choice, I believe, to decide kind of how we want to proceed. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree so much. And I think it's that same idea, like being flexible as you ride that surfboard. And you know, this beautiful thing about surfing is like, they're so in tune with the water. They're so in tune with Mother Earth in terms of like the waves that are speaking to us. And if anything right now, it is time to be in tune with Mother Earth. She needs our help. Look at the crazy storms. It's a direct reflection of who we are. And so really being in alignment with her too is really important too. That element of water is going to be so important for all of us this year. It really is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I guess that's what it is. Like we have this great new moon coming in. Like you said, don't be afraid of the black. When they call it the black, I got confused. I thought it was the blue, but you're right. It's the full moons for those. So the next black moon. And right now we are sitting in the dark of the moon and with the light, you know, the light is starting to come back, right? Yay. But you can let your energy drop. It can be a time of that, but know that that new energy is coming forward that will help to lift your spirit and allow yourself to put those intentions out again. I think that's really important. And then I think all of us are going to start to see that February is going to change. And even into March, I mean, I, there's some great predictions coming out for March, at least I know for my sign there is, but I think February is going to be a really needed change for every one of us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's see. Before you go, tell us a little bit. You do private consultations, private mentoring. Yeah. I think there's an announcement you have coming up. Yes. Yeah. So I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I have met with some of you since I was on at the beginning of the month, and it's been so wonderful to get to know some of your community and welcome yeah. you mine. So you can learn more about my one-on-one -on -one sessions via my link in bio. Follow me on Instagram. Um, I'll chat. I'll drop my my handle. There we go. Um, in the chat, I also do one-on-one -on -one astrology mentorship to go much more in depth, have kind of one-on-one -on -one support for how do you work with all of the different energies, right, that we're talking about today. You and I are talking about it collectively, and there's an opportunity to do it personally. And then, yes, I have a big announcement coming tomorrow about an event that I'm hosting in February that is going to be one of a kind and super exciting. So be sure to follow me on social so that you will be in the know for the skinny. And thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Yes. Well, thank you for coming back. I always love talking to you. It adds just another layer to my knowledge, especially. But thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Yeah. So great information for all of us to really kind of take in as we go into this energy. 
depending on where you are, of course, but for most of us here, especially in the South, we're going to be having that new moon come in tomorrow, late tomorrow night into Tuesday with the, have the energy of the Chinese New Year, which is a lot of fun. It really is. It's definitely a lot of fun. So get all your cleaning done. Chinese custom is that you do no cleaning at the new year, all that whole week, I think maybe a month, but at least that full week, you don't want to stir up the energy. So get all your cleaning done by tonight, really, tomorrow morning, perhaps, but allow yourself to open up to this newness as we step in. Renew your vision boards. I love my vision boards, all of them. I've done about three, so you can do as many as you want. And it really is a lot of great energy moving through. Of course, it's always a perspective. It's always a choice. I know I've had my struggles, but it gives me the opportunity to go, wait a minute, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to change that, and then I can shift the energy. For me, with a big emotional body, and maybe you're like that too. You notice it too, like you hang on a little longer. We all have our stuff, but when we recognize it and when we have that awareness, this is how we move through. And I will say too, if you're watching this, you're a teacher of the light, you're a beer of the light, you're a healing of the light in some kind of way, we need you, we need you, we need you. The world needs you to stand up and shine your light as well. Really important for all of us just to kind of start doing this work, talking about it more and more and more. So let's just take a moment and pull all the energy in. Take a nice deep breath. Thank you again, Sophia. And just let all that we've talked about settle in within your own self, how you can make these changes for you. And just take a moment with me, take a nice deep inhale, then we'll get to the cards. Present your spirit and just notice where you are right now in your own life. Firming my spirit and everyone that is here or watching later. Dropping into the heart. Know that you are known, know that you are loved. Just connecting with the greater source, creator, God, universe, spirit, however you want to look at that, the cosmos, the stars, and just feel that energy coming into your heart. Just creating this sacred space for all of us, calling in the masters, the teachers, the archangels to bring us joy for this week, the crystal beings for guidance and protection, calling in your own spirit guides. Feel that energy coming around you. Taking this time to notice where you are right here. We're in the season of winter. Here in this hemisphere, Kat, I know you're down in Australia. So wherever you are, just noticing that energy for you. The season of winter found in the north where we do go in deep. Where we embrace our ancestors, our past, our lives to dream and to vision. Setting an intention for where you are right now as we call in directions to the north the east, the south, and the west, above us, Father Sky, below us, Mother Earth, right into the very center, setting that intention, and just let everything else fall away. Just feel as you exhale out, the stress go, centering, calling your spirit right here, opening your heart with your intention for this week, finding those elevated emotions that match that intention, joy, peace, love, abundance, and just let it radiate all around you. Taking a nice deep inhale, centering, grounding, calling all those many parts back to you as you go to start this week. One more deep inhale. And exhale. Just releasing the attachment, grounding your energy, coming back into your center as we look to the cards for guidance. Opening your eyes. So the first card is pretty perfect. <laughs> I was wondering when this was going to show up. It's the tower. So the tower is about big change. Big change. Things are coming down. Things will be, be brought back up again. But look how beautiful this card is. Laurie did a great job. Shout out to Lauriana. Look at the lightning bolts. Look at the whirlwind. Look at the things jumping out of the house. So yeah, it is a time to restructure, to make new changes, to do things differently, to rebuild from the ground up. Perfect card as we move to the end of January into February. Don't be afraid of the card. Just know you're being called to make changes. So the other cards that come in to help us work through this energy, the first card is the five of water, which is change. Emotional. That energy we're in, it was reversed. So the reverse is that like, okay, we know we're in change. We can close our eyes, as she's doing in the card, and fear it. Or we can then open the eyes, recognize what we have built, and rebuild the structures that we need to. So this is a water card, the energy coming in with that tiger energy as well, allowing you to move through the changes that you need 
and finding the ability to do that. Two of Earth comes in, which is good because this is like our juggling energy. Where's the balance in your life, especially between like work and home? All right, where can you find that balance for you that's going to help you bring forward those changes that you seek? A really great card to think about. Are you working too much? Are you not working enough? Where can you find that balance to find the boundaries that you need for your own life? And always one of my favorites, the two of water, another water card, another two. So this card, this is the lover's card. It really is. This is about creating that deeper connection. All right, some of that Venus energy coming back around going deeper into your relationships with yourself and those around you, and even like perhaps a partnership that you're in right now. So beautiful cards that give us the message to open your heart, have compassion, be like that water tiger. Know the change is coming. Don't hide. Open the eyes and embrace the changes that you can. Find the boundaries. Find the balance in your work, in your home that can take you forward and open you up, right, to the work that's coming through, change, change, change. It's okay. We need it. Embrace it with love, with light, with compassion, with curiosity. Those are the best words I can offer as well. All right. Take a breath. Let me know how that resonates with you. If you would like a card, let me know if you're still hanging out with us. What a great offering from Sophia. Let me know if you'd like a card. Lots of waving going on here. I don't know if you guys are still over here on Facebook. All right. Kika, can I have a card? And can your friend Kenny have a card? All right, Kika, we'll draw for you first for the birthday girl. Kika, it's another transformation card. All right, many people get scared by the death card, but this is like go ahead and shed a skin. You're going through your 50s, a great time to do what the F you want to do. So I embrace this card, especially with both of these. It's like we were saying, now's the time to make a change. If you ever wanted to add something new to your work, add something new to your life, make a change, make a shift, now's the time. As you embrace that 50, shed a skin, shine that true self of who you are. I think that's a great card. I really do. All right. For Kenny, this is a nine of water, another water card. And this is the wish card. All right. This is like things are working. There's more to come, especially in the heart, especially as you move through that water tiger wish. Go outside, especially on that new moon. You can even save it for the new moon and make a wish. What do you want to wish? And can you even answer that? Sometimes you say, what do you want to wish for? I'm like, I don't know, right? That kind of stuff. So let me know what that is. All right, over here on Facebook, Brooke and then Kat. Brooke, we got the six of air. All right, air, that's some of that Aquarius energy of the mind. Things are moving towards calmer water. Beautiful card. I know you had COVID. I hope you're feeling better. And this is also about asking for help. You see there's somebody in the car, in the boat, helping them move to calmer water. So you will see start to be a little calmer, get some help if you need it, all right? A nice card for you. Kat, Kat, you got the three of water. More water, more water. All right, all of this coming forward as we move into this time period. So the three of water is about celebrating. Get out, celebrate with people. Celebrate that Chinese New Year. Celebrate something important, and not just with anybody, people that make a difference. Honor the work that you've done. I always say that. I know lots of times us as women, we forget to honor what we've done. Honor what you've done. Get out and celebrate. Thank you for both of us. You're welcome, Kika. All right, Diane. Good to see you. Diane, ten of Earth. So this is about like all your work is that you've been doing is coming to like kind of like closure to begin again. So this is a great card to really honor it. See what you've built. Notice if you're working just to work or if you're working to really create something really beautiful. Look how everything has come together in this card. So tens are about conclusion and beginning again. So take the knowledge, take the wisdom as you go, all that beautiful effort you've put into something and you will start again. All right, Marissa. Marissa, we got the son of earth. So Marissa, this is all about being really loyal, being strong to what you're doing. You know how dogs are. You know how well you communicate with dogs. And this is just something like that. Okay, let me just get my to-do list done now, which you're great at, and keep moving through as you up the energy as you move into February. Mark, you got the Empress. Maybe we should have turned those around. All right, Mark, you get this. You get the Son of Earth. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep plotting along. Marissa is the Empress, aligning with the universe. However, you can look at it, Mark, too. Be in alignment with the cosmos. Everything we've said. That new job, new moon, all that energy coming forward for you. All right, lovely. Thank you. Yes, Kat, you're down in Australia, so you get the summer, I guess, right now. Yeah. All right. Anybody else that I missed? Hey, Brittany, how are you? Let's connect. I think I've gotten everybody. So what a great show. What a great, lots of great information with Sophia. Really great. I really love having her on. 
notice where you are right now in your own life. What can be changed? What can move forward? What can you do differently, creatively, innovatively, intuitively? All those questions are coming forward for sure. You can find me starting Tuesday on the 1st over at the Yoga Circle. I'm going to be teaching. And my Tuesday morning class, I'm going to be bringing in a lot of the things that really help me. The pranayama to really focus, the breathing that is helping me in my lungs, and the movements to bet and rights that have helped me get back to my yoga practice. I'm very excited. I love Stephen over there at the Yoga Circle. Shout out to them. And my Friday evening class, 5 p.m., will be restorative with the sound bowls and a little Reiki thrown in, right, to help us just unwind from the week. Very excited about that. I also have an Akashic reading um, webinar I'm doing with the Advanced Energy Group that I'm in, and it's open to everybody. We're going to be talking about imprints, how to look at those, followed by a five-week workshop I'll be teaching on how you can read your own Akashic records. All you need is your intuition to come forward for that. I'm very excited to offer that as well. I do have a Reiki One class coming up in February. All this is posted on my website. All right, check out the podcast. Again, it was one of my most favorite conversations I've had with Ron Lev. It's about the third time I've interviewed him. Offer you some tips on how to make some changes in your own life as well. One minute at a time. Don't get yourself overwhelmed. So let's just take all this energy coming back to the center, coming back to your heart. Taking a nice deep inhale. And exhale. Present your spirit as you offer gratitude for your spirit. Showing up for you all the time. Gratitude for the greater spirit. Gratitude for this week ahead. Inhaling and exhaling. Feel yourself centered. Thanks again for listening to your spirit. Namaste. Thank you.